Dong Win created Flappy Bird in three days, but ChatGPT said it would take me 40 hours to make a Flappy Bird clone. So I set out to prove it wrong and make the game in less than four hours. Is that possible? Let's find out. Here are the rules. I have to use Unity, just like the original game. I'm allowed to use any resources I can find, including ChatGPT. The bad thing is, I have literally never used Unity before. This is what ChatGPT thought I'd be spending my time on. I start my timer and dive in. I searched YouTube for Flappy Bird Unity Tutorial and found a video titled Make Your Own Flappy Bird in 10 Minutes Unity Tutorial by Valum. This is brilliant. It's obviously exactly what I need. I start Unity, select a 2D core project, and move on to creating the game artwork. Valum's tutorial provides me a link to download all the artwork, which saves me a ton of time. I load the image file into Unity and use the sprite editor to turn the little pictures into individual sprites. At 22 minutes in, I'm ahead of my 4-hour schedule, but way behind Valen's 10-minute promise. I add the background and the bird sprite to the game. Actually, there are three bird sprites, which can be used to create a flapping animation. Or at least Valum could do that. I can't get it working. Frustrated, I decide to skip the animation and proceed with the rest of the game, now dubbed Rigid Bird. I add the ground sprite, but I can't get it to move to the bottom of the screen. After some trial and error, I find the right menu and get it working. I follow the tutorial to add a gravity effect to the bird, which makes it fall. I use ChatGPT to write a bird script that makes the bird go up for each button press. That works beautifully, and the bird has the ability to fly. However, the bird also still has the unfortunate ability to fall through the ground. So the next step is to add a collider to the bird and a collider to the ground, which is done with a few more button clicks in Unity. Now when the bird hits the ground, it stops. Next is adding the pipes. Adding some code makes the pipes move from right to left across the screen. The bird can still fly through the pipes though, but I fix that by adding two more colliders, one to the top pipe and one to the bottom pipe. Now the bird will impact the pipes, and I guess it spins after impact? So maybe the game is spinny bird? We add another empty component and some more code to spawn these pipes over and over again. The pipes should spawn at random heights to add to the game's challenge. ChatGPT gives me this code also. In Valum's tutorial at this point, he also adds an animation effect to the ground. This makes it look like the bird is flying rather than that the pipes are moving. However, I'm not going to mess with animation again, so it's another thing I'm skipping. We need the game to stop when the bird hits a pipe, so we add a new canvas and drag some more artwork over for a game over screen. This takes me repeated slow viewings of Valum's 10 minute tutorial to get right. Actually, I still don't get it right because the game over screen shows all the time, not just at the end of the game. I ask ChatGPT how to fix it. It gives me some buttons to click in Unity, or code to copy into one of my C Sharp scripts. Obviously, I just copy the code and that works. Another script makes a button on the game over screen restart the game. Next, I have ChatGPT modify the script so the game only starts after a player clicks a button, rather than having the bird start falling and die immediately. This is actually a bit challenging because ChatGPT doesn't remember all the scripts and forgets the references between them, but we do get it working. But now we come to my biggest problem. My pipes are all at the same height. Honestly, I could have sworn this was working earlier, and I don't know when I changed to break it. This is the first problem I have to solve on my own, because none of ChatGPT's code tweaks do anything. Eventually, I figure out that I omitted a negative sign for the minimum value in the range of possible heights. So the random number selected was always the same number. It's a blunder on my part, but also highlighted a ChatGPT weakness, as it only focused on the scripts and not the GUI settings. I'm a little over 3 hours in at this point, and the only thing remaining I want to accomplish is adding the score. I settle for plain text on a new canvas and use another collider in the pipes to trigger a C-sharp script that updates the score. However, something doesn't work, and I'm getting a compiler error in Unity. Worse, I used up all my chat GPT quota so I can't ask it. So this time I go to Google with the error message. The top result has my answer, which is basically that I was sloppy with not capitalizing my class name in my script. Now I've reached the end of Valum's 10-minute tutorial. I think we can all agree that this is a bird, and it's a game, so I'm going to call this a success. It took me three and a half hours, slightly better than my four hour goal, if you ignore the animations and fonts that never got working. This is Doobie Insights. Thanks for watching.